Hey folks, um, I'm going to do kind of a, I guess a final-ish video uh, for Frosthaven here. I finally got everything set up the way I want it. Um, the only thing I have not done is I have not sleeved the starting class cards. Uh, we'll just deal with that when we start playing. Because uh, I don't know if the sleeved cards will actually fit back into these character boxes. Um, it's already pretty packed full and there's not really a lot of room so I think it would just become a mess and uh, we'll probably just sleeve our cards as we uh, as we choose our starting uh, classes and then store them into the character boxes uh, instead of these um, what I do want to do uh, right now is kind of go over how uh, the laser ox insert all goes back together and then talk about uh, the laser ox insert a little bit as I put it back together uh, things that I like, things that I don't like. Um, so, first, obviously, you got to pull out all of the um, uh, the inserts that come with Frosthaven. So, there's several plastic trays and stuff. Um, two of them are like the base tray, and then there's another tray that, like an L shaped tray that sits on top of it. Those two trays I'm probably just going to pitch, uh, but there was a set of trays that, that uh, was a smaller little rectangular thing that uh, held the tokens and whatnot. I I might hold that onto that just to sort of organize other games um, or use it just on the table to put pieces from games just so they're not scattered around um, and easy to reach. You just kind of hand the tray around to players to get what they need. Um, so you're going to take those trays, you're going to throw them out. I just noticed my box has got a little bit of a scratch there on the inside. Um, all right, you're going to take all of your character class uh, envelopes and you're going to put them like that. So you're going to have um, all of them but one. Uh, this one can actually technically go here. If you squeeze these together, it will fit there, but then it throws off the layout of the insert. Um, one thing I do want to say about the laser ox insert is that um, it is not... It does not fit in the box as tightly as I had thought it would. Um, I have the, the broken token insert for Gloomhaven, and that thing is packed in there tight to where nothing can move around. Here, things can shift a little bit. You'll see the monster box goes here. Um, this slides. I mean, there's like a good half inch, and maybe a quarter of an inch that it, that it, that is on either side. Um, so that can slide around. So there is room. It will probably make it easier to get these things out of the box. Um, but I just thought it was odd. Um, so you'll take your monster box, whether you have the standee box or the tuck box, uh, they both would go right here. Um, you're going to set up all your character envelopes here. Then you are going to take your large card tray like this and it is going to sit right go right in that section right there now i want to talk about this real quick the holes on the bottom of the large card tray um, are a little too large in my opinion and the allows like the corner of the cards to come sticking through a little bit um, i am not planning to at least i haven't planned to sleeve the road events and the town events and, and so forth and so on that this might change my mind um, simply because if they were sleeved there's going to be a little extra on the on the edges to keep them from falling you know cattywampus in there uh, i did sleeve all the battle gold cards i did sleeve the first four starting building cards i did sleeve all of the uh, personal quests and i did sleeve all of the uh random modifiers attack deck modifiers that go into the the corner down here so this goes right down in here like that kind of holds everything together um, next are the uh, character trays so you're gonna have your character trays um, that just sit like this so these stacked uh, one on top of the other so you have four trays and you're going to do two and two. 
Um, then you are going to take your uh, status indicator box that holds all the uh, status effects and it tilts sideways. It has a lid on it, so don't worry. And it slides in right next to the four character boxes like that. Then you're going to take your obstacle box, which is this one right here, um, and you're going to want to make, make sure you set this in here so that the lid can't slide out and you the way you do that is you put it so the when the lid slides out it's going to hit the um, character trays and that's going to go right there uh, it is going to sit on top of this little piece for the top of the the box um, it, it, it is what it is I mean, there's not really much you can do um, and then beside of that you're going to put your envelope box so it can be your envelopes uh, envelope box with your um, loot cards which I did sleeve um, and then the uh, random scenario generator which I did not sleeve and those are just going to go right like that right beside it then you will take your small card tray and your small card tray is going to go sitting right on top of the um, make sure I got those in there wrong my apologies um, let me pull this back out for a moment these character trays need to set so that the nubs Are together and the reason it needs to be that way is because there is a indentation on the bottom of the small card tray with the two nubs so you can set it in there and it it lines itself up with those two nubs and it sits there nicely keeps it from moving around now small card tray I sleeved the available items purchasable items I sleeve the avail available crafting items and I also sleeve the unavailable crafting items because I didn't realize that's what they were until after I had sleeved three quarters of them and by that time I was too late. I also sleeved the starting uh, random item um, blueprints and I sleeved the starting town deck, town guard deck. I have not sleeved anything else. <clears throat> I will probably sleeve item cards as they become available. I will wait and sleeve this, uh, what is this deck called? This deck is called the the Challenges. Um, I will sleeve this deck when we get to that point, when that the challenge system is revealed, um, and sleeve whatever ones become available. I, I imagine not all of these become available at once. <clears throat> I did use little card dividers. They do slide into this tray, but they, it does bend them. So just keep that in mind. Um, I'm not really terribly concerned about it. The tabs are not at the top, but you really only need it to separate the cards. Um, and it's pretty easy to, to pick them out. Um, so that's the small card tray that goes there. Then we have the stat card tray, uh, which is here. And beneath here, I do have the monster modifier deck and the allied modifier deck and they are both sleeved they do both sit in here however um, this insert does not lend itself very well to sleeved cards it does in the sense that everything's wide enough for the cards to sit in here and it's tall enough for the cards to sit in here when they're like this uh, these cards that sit underneath this they're laying flat and the dividers are not tall enough. Um, <clears throat> when I sleeve cards, I am not one to take the Encyclopedia Britannica books to lay on top of it for a month so that it squeezes all the air out of the sleeve and, the, and it's nice and thin and, the, and the, it lays perfectly. I sleeve them and they go into an insert or you know, have a rubber band wrapped around them or something like that. Um, Maybe laying a heavy book on top of it for a week or whatever will, you know, help things out. But as they are now, if you sleeve them and put them in here, they're going to raise up to the top. You do need this heavy set of cards on top of them to keep them down. 
I don't think they're going to mix, you know, slide over into each other that 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 easily, but it is a possibility. Um, and I don't know how else they could have done it, though, to be honest with you, because there's not much room to play with uh, height-wise here. Maybe move those off to another tray or something where they could be able to, I don't know. Even these cards here are, you know, this this side is held down by this piece of wood, but these are, they're poking up above the insert, so. It is what it is. It, it, it was designed enough to hold sleeved cards, but it wasn't designed to perfectly hold sleeved cards, I guess. Um, but like I said, I don't know what else they could have done. I'm sure there are options. I'm sure other people have come up with design changes. And I'm sure there's going to be a 3D printed version of an insert that you can print or have printed that's going to fit everything perfectly with sleeves and not have all the, the, those same issues. Um, so next thing is you're going to have your character box tray. And that's going to slide right down like that. And you're gonna to wanna to make sure you miss the tray down there. And that slide and that make sure it's all the way to the, the to the well to the right side if you're looking at it like this. It's all the way up against these sets of trays because you are going to take your um, health tracker sections and it or tokens tray, turn it sideways, it's gonna go like that. You're gonna take your boss monster tray and it's going to go right there and you're going to take your standee tray and it's going to go right there so on top of this you're going to set all your rule books so i have them all stacked up here already the board is on the bottom so that's going to go in sit right there like this this includes this includes the assembly book and the, and the uh, element board. Uh, it's got the rule book. It's got some of the uh, the, the building stickers. Uh, that might be a little bit of a, a spoiler. Um, it also has the, and I'm just looking at that now. I might have to move that. The removable sticker set might have to lay like this. Um, and the solo rules are also in there as well, as well as the two scenario books. Um, and the original rules like setup guide that comes with the game to you know before you get started do this so we'll set the uh, removable stickers there and then we have the uh, the branching paths so to speak actually let's put that down first and then we'll put the removable stickers on top of that so that sits on top like that and then we should be able to take our box lid slide it right over top gently pushing down and there is going to be a little bit of box lift or lid lift come on there we go i'm all the way down now i've got about a quarter of an inch lid lift uh, which is not terrible because there's i don't know a foot and a half maybe a foot of actual box so it's not it's not make or break um, the insert does fit all of uh, everything in there aside from the map tiles um, I'm not using uh, as I said in other videos I'm not using the um, the laser ox map box I am I did actually purchase the uh, the folded space insert map box uh, and that's what I'm going to use for all my maps just because or map tiles because it's a lot better organized in my opinion um, so yes that is um, Frosthaven organized with the laser ox insert and the folded space map box um, happy with it uh, took me let's see I'm gonna say probably close to four ish hours to put the laser ox insert together 
I'd say another four hours to probably get everything punched. Actually, no, I'm going to bump that up to six hours. Get everything punched, get everything organized in the, the laser ox insert, and get the card sleeved. It might have been, it might have, somewhere between six and eight hours to do all that. Um, yeah, uh, I do, I would recommend, so if you are going to sleeve, um, uh, there's a sheet of paper in, that comes with this that's like your initial setup, like initial game setup, and it tells you, you know, get the first 20 cards of this deck and shuffle them and put them here, so forth and so on. Um, I would recommend going through that first before you sleeve anything, because a lot of these decks are actually easier to shuffle before they're sleeved, especially like the Battle Goals deck. It's, it's a big deck of cards for the Battle Goals, and it's just easier to shuffle that deck unsleeved and then sleeve it and then maybe you could give it another side shuffle or something. Um, you know, one shuffle before you sleeve it, it's not going to hurt it, um, in my opinion. Now, one last thing I do want to go over is the uh, the Frost Heaven card sleeves. Um, like I said, I'm not sleeving everything, uh, but I wanted to show you what I have basically used so far. So I've used a handful of the larger sleeves for... Um, personal quests and the building cards I have used um, almost half I've used one two three four five six seven seven and I don't know maybe an eighth seven and an eighth packs of the small cards to do the monster modifiers the allied modifiers the miscellaneous modifiers the battle goals all of the monster ability cards for each month, you know, each class of monster. Um, I sleeve players one through four uh, combat decks, the, or the, the modifier decks, rather. Um, I have not sleeved any of the initial starting classes. Um, oh, I also sleeved uh, all the, the uh, like, the starting items the starting craftable items um, and a few of the others in there um, so that's what I've used so far I'd say probably I'm only probably going to use like half of these big cards because the other half were probably meant to be sleeving the uh, road events and the outpost events I'm not going to sleeve those um, it's just it's not worth it the time commitment to do that and you're going to have to shuffle them I mean, they're going to be shuffled, but it's not like they're shuffled 12 times per game session or something like that. Like, it's going to be... Maybe each deck will be shuffled. Let's see, there's like supposed to be, what, 120 scenarios in Frosthaven. So there, it might be shuffled, let's say, 150 times. Like, it's not... You know, that's not... I think they'll last through that. And I'm, I'm not concerned about it. But I just wanted to show the uh, how many of the sleeves I actually did use so far. <clears throat> uh, for and these are the obviously these are the sleeves that come with the the Kickstarter, the deluxe edition or whatever you want to call it. All in, uh, I'm sure any sleeves. These sleeves seem very nice. If it says what they are from. Like the manu the actual manufacturer, it does not. They, they feel very high quality. Um, they're on the level of like Paladin sleeves, in my opinion. So um, I'm happy with them. I did I, I sleeved all those cards. I didn't have a single sleeve slit. I didn't have a single defect in any of the sleeves. Um, so that's that. I mean, that's roughly almost half of the small cards. I suppose there could be imperfections in the large cards, but small cards were great. Um, all right, so let's see, that's going to go away. So now this gets to go on the shelf until we finish Gloomhaven, and then we can dive into this. I know you can technically play this without having played Gloomhaven. However, I think this is going to be a much more fun and engaging campaign than what Gloomhaven is, so I don't want to get started into it until we've gotten through Gloomhaven, because I have a feeling if we were to start this, we'd be like, ah, let's just not play Gloomhaven and just play this. 
But anyways, uh, that is my uh, final, quote-unquote final, uh, sort of video for Frosthaven before we start playing. I, it's probably going to be a year before we actually get to this. Um, but we'll see. Anyways, thanks for watching, guys.